All right, I think we're live. I've got some berries here. I'm gonna tell you how many berries to grind for how much flour you need in a recipe. Before we get to that though, I wanna do a sound and video check. My son Mike is assisting and Peggy is on Facebook. So I need the green light before I go on. Do we have a green light? And while I'm, while I'm waiting on that, you all can be chiming in with where you're from, your first name and what you're sipping on today. I'd love to hear that. Are we good? No bad comments coming in? All right, I think we're good then. So, hi everyone, I'm Wardy, and welcome to Ask Wardy, the weekly show where I answer your questions about traditional cooking. This episode and every episode is ready for you, the transcript, audio, and video at askwardy.tv, so be sure to go there and check out this and previous episodes. Today we're answering a question from Mary B. How many berries to grind for the amount of flour in a recipe? Here's the issue, if you're doing whole grain, flowers that you grind yourself, you have berries. These are einkorn berries. But you have a recipe and it says five and a half cups, let's say. Well, how many berries do you grind? It's really important to get it right. Um, and here's why. Because fresh ground flour that you grind immediately and use in a recipe is the healthiest and you get the best results. So you don't want to have extra. That means next time you bake, you're not using fresh ground flour, you're using old flour. So there's a really simple formula to follow so you know how much of these to grind, no matter what flour you're using, to get that kind, that much flour for the recipe. Okay, so let me read you Mary's question exactly. She said, I have recipes that call for so much flour, only I'm grinding my own flour from whole grain berries. How do I know how many berries to grind into a flour? Is there a general rule for that? Yes, there is, Mary. Thank you for the question. By the way, Mary's gonna get a free gift, as does everyone who submits a question to Ask Wardy. So you can um, look at askwardy.tv to find out how to do that. So here is how to find out how much flour to grind. The general rule is, and first I'm gonna talk about measuring by volume, which means you're doing cups, okay? volume not weight. The general rule is however many cups of flour you need for the recipe, you grind half as many of berries using the same units. So example, if you need two cups of flour in the recipe, you grind one cup of berries. If you need three cups of flour in the recipe, you grind one and a half cups of berries. So uh, I think that makes sense and I hope I didn't mix up my words. I find when I look at recordings sometimes that I mix up my words. Um, so we might be asking some questions about this. Oh, let me show you an example. This right here, I ground a half cup of einkorn berries and I got about a cup of einkorn flour out the end of the mill. Um, so let me go on with some questions you might have. So I'm using einkorn here, which is the um, oldest variety of wheat. It's arguably healthier, and that's what our family uses. Um, but you might say, well, I'm using spelt, I'm using wheat. Does this work? Yes, it generally works for all the berries that you grind into flour. Now there's probably some variables, so just start with my general rule and go from there and document your peculiarities. If you're switching from different kinds of flours, then document. If one is a little bit less or a little bit more than the rule, document it and you'll know for the next time. Um, here is a quick tip for you. Grind right into your mixing bowl. This is just a bonus quick tip because we all wanna avoid dishes, right? And the, 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 the least amount of dishes we have to do, the better. So if you're making a recipe and you know it needs three cups of flour, and by the way, you can do sprouted um, berries as well with this formula, you just mill your grain right into the bowl and then you proceed with the recipe. Now, if the recipe calls for flour and additions, you can do the same thing. So you'd mill into the bowl the first amount of flour, do whatever steps are necessary in the recipe, even soaking overnight, and then, um, then you can mill more with the next step of the recipe, right into the bowl, and then you never have an extra dish because you're doing the exact amount of flour you need for the recipe, and you're doing it right into the mixing bowl. Pretty cool, huh? Now. Another question you might have, what if you're going to sift the flour? Well, sifting, which we do for lighter baked goods, um, you're removing parts of the flour that are tougher, parts of the berry that are tougher, like the outer bran. And so what you do is you just mill a little bit more to account for the loss. And if your flour, or if your recipe calls for just a little bit of flour, you know, like a cup or less, or just a small amount, then, um, you're not gonna have to do much extra 
grains into flour. But if your recipe calls for a large quantity of flour, then you'll have to do more extra. And as a general rule, this is what I do, for every, um, for every, well, every one cup of berries that I'm grinding, I will do a rounded cup instead of a flat cup. And that generally gets me the amount of flour I need, um, accounting for any that I've sifted out. Okay, now, what if you do have extra? As I said at the top of the hour, you don't wanna have extra because fresh ground flour acts the best in your recipes and is the healthiest. So you wanna grind the right amount. But inevitably, sometimes we have extra. Just a small amount, what do you do with it? We'll put it in the fridge or freezer because that maintains the nutrients the longest. And in previous Ask Wardies, I've talked about the rules for how long each lasts. In fact, the last episode, 117, I went over that. So move it into the fridge or freezer, but guess what that extra flour is great for? It's great for feeding your starter, your sourdough starter. By the way, we have free instructions for that at tradcookschool.com slash starter. And um, just go ahead and use that extra flour to feed your starter and then you'll then use fresh ground for your other recipes. Um, another question, and I know this is gonna come up, in fact, my daughter Hania is the one who said, Mom, I bet people are going to ask this. What if you're measuring by weight? Now, our uh, free no-need artisan um, loaf recipe that you can get at tradcookschool.com slash free bread calls for um, flour by weight. It calls for 700, 720 grams of einkorn flour. So... You've got your kitchen scale, which you do have if you're a cook that's doing by weight. And the rule for this is 720 grams of berries is still going to be 720 grams of flour when you're done because the weight isn't lost. Now volume, it fluffs up, but the weight is the same. So in that recipe, which again is at tradcookschool.com slash free bread, you weigh 720 grams of berries and grind them and use them all in the recipe. So that's what you do if you're doing by weight. If you have any other questions about this, you can post them on Facebook. By the way, um, Peggy is there right now answering questions and pasting links. I'm gonna be sharing some links. Um, I did already and I'll be sharing some more. So Peggy's there to answer your questions. You can also go to askwardy.tv, look for episode 118 where the transcript is and in the comments you can add questions and I'll be answering them as time goes on. So really quick, I wanted to show you how this works. Oh wait. Um, I have one more quick tip for you, and this has to do with uh, your mixing bowl. If you are doing grain in a mixer, like an electric mixer, this is the bowl from my Bosch. You can actually do on-demand flour if your mill accommodates it, and the mock mill does, by milling right into your mixing bowl. Literally, this is where the, um, the paddles and stuff go around. Now, if you have a counter that's two levels, the mock mill is perfect for that, otherwise you'll need a sturdy box, but you just get it up high enough and you can mill right into your mixing bowl. That is pretty cool. And that's what we would call on-demand flour. Okay, now what I wanna do is just show you a little bit about the mock mill because it's my favorite um, home stone grain mill and it's the one we use exclusively in our home. And mock mill has put together a special for our readers through January um, 17th. And so I wanna show you the mock mill and then tell you a little bit about the special. So this is the mock mill. It's a home stone grain mill. It's made by Wolfgang Mock and manufactured in Germany. Wolfgang Mock has a long career making grain mills. He's been doing it for more than 40 years. And it's said that today, 70% of the stone mills are made by him. And he recently created the mock mill, which is an affordable stone grain mill. He made it affordable by creating the housing with recycling mat recycled materials, but the stones inside are stone. And this is a versatile mill. The flour it's produced is um, cool to the touch, whereas it's warm to hot on other mills. It can crack grains, like for cracked grain porridges, it can mill spices, as well as make very fine flour. So it's fantastic and it's the first one of its kind that's affordable for the, for the home baker. So, and it's very simple to use. This is the hopper where you put your grain. This dial right here is where you adjust the fineness and coarseness. And I'm making fine flour right now, so I have it on one, which is the finest. And um, 
you turn it on and you put your grain in. And I have about a half cup of einkorn berries here, so I'm gonna get about a cup of flour and you can see um, how it works. <laughs> So that was fast, it was easy. I now have fresh ground flour, two cups worth um, to make something later today or feed my sourdough starter. And um, it's cool to the touch. It's very, in fact, it's cold <laughs> and it's very fine. It just makes fantastic flour. So I really hope you can take advantage of this special. So it goes through January 17th. You can get $20 off the Mock Mill 100 or if you go with the Mock Mill 200 that just grinds faster, you can get $30 off. In addition to that, you can get a um, ancient grains kit actually that they ship you and it's worth $43.50 four cents. Um, you'll get a bag of einkorn, which is the oldest variety of wheat. You'll also get three other ancient grains that happen to be gluten-free that make a great uh, gluten-free blend. Millet, teff, and buckwheat. And I'm going to move the einkorn over here for our, for our Instagram people so you can be sure and see it. So this is the ancient grains kit through January 17th that Mock Mill will send you. And that's not all you get with this special. You also get, um, pull it up, they have two eBooks for you. The Mock Mill Farm Directory and Grain Milling Guide. So it basically just teaches you about milling. And it also gives you a directory for farmers and farms so that you might find some heritage, good quality, pesticide-free and or organic grains in your area. Then there's the mock mill recipe guide because once you have fresh ground flour, you definitely want to use it in your baking. Um, and one of our recipes is in there. So the mock mills package is fantastic. Save $20, get the free ancient grains kit and get two free eBooks from them. <clears throat> now that's all by January 17th. You can get the link if you go to askwardy.tv uh, look for episode 118. Also, if you're on Facebook, Peggy is pasting it in the comments. Or if you just want to type it in your browser, it's tradcookschool.com slash mockmill. M-O-C-K-M-I-L-L. -L, all one word. Um, and I want to say that in addition to what Mock Mill is giving you, I am giving you a gift with your purchase. So you can get our uh, two ebook packages. We have one on sourdough where you can make all kinds of recipes for your house. You can literally do all your family's baking with sourdough, which is the healthiest grain prep method. And then einkorn baking, which specifically uses the ancient wheat einkorn in recipes, lots of recipes. So to claim that, that doesn't come from mock mill, that comes from me. So what you do is you purchase your mock mill, tradcookschool.com slash mock mill, and then you go to tradcookschool.com slash mill bonus, M-I-L-L-B-O-N-U-S and then you can claim those two free eBooks from me. They have a value of um, $128, but you get it for free. All right, so to wrap up everyone, I'm ready for more questions. You can submit at askwardy.tv. You can find the complete transcript for everything we discussed today, as well as the audio and video recordings when we add them, askwardy.tv. Look for episode 118. And the mock mill info is tradcoatschool.com slash mock mill. And I think that's it, except for me saying, Happy New Year. Happy New Year, everyone. So glad you made it. God bless you. Bye-bye.